Um, uh, I'm worse than Matt. My talk's going to take 30 minutes, but um, I'm going to get it done in 15. And um, what we've got here is that I have tested the effectiveness of 50 different movie clips coupled with the answer to the question, is it real or is it fake? And on this slide, I'm showing with the font size, which ones are the most effective, right? So which ones connect strongest to the audience? Harry Potter, uh, really big, and then uh, get smaller from there. Apollo 13, huge, right? You can use these movie clips to teach in the classroom and out of the classroom. So let me give you an overview of how this fits into my life, right? So I'm a professor, and it was after I got tenure that I got interested in the idea of communicating science. And I've got three aspects of my life that I think about when I think about it formally. And I try to make each one of them work with each other. And so over the years, I've developed a philosophy on uh, what I want to hook on to. And I do believe that people will have more interesting and productive lives if they know more chemistry and certainly more science. But I also believe that people are more likely to do things they're interested in. And so how do you bridge that gap? Well, it started out with uh, Chemistry Day, an informal science environment. And I'll tell you just a little bit about that. I've done some uh, movie talks at science camps and to senior citizens. But my academic side, that is my publications in using movies to teach came out of teaching general chemistry, where they had to do a formal writing assignment. And I found out that using a movie made them more interested in writing about it, right? Um, I taught an honors course and lots of other stuff. So let me quickly tell you about Chemistry Day. It's 15 years old now. And it started with the idea, how are we going to recruit students to the chemistry program, the undergraduate chemistry program? Um, Saturdays. And we have a variety of events. The assessments of this thing started out real simple. How many people showed up? And then in the survey, which parts did you enjoy the most, right? So really crude stuff. This is, we're talking about ancient history here, right, 2001. And um, building tours where you see what's going on, visits to three professors department, hear about their research. But we do fun stuff like demonstrations, uh, flashes, and smells. And then we do some hands-on stuff. In the afternoons for the first seven years, we did a Chemistry in the Movies talk. And this is where actually I started doing my Chemistry in the Movies talk. I thought, OK, how do people encounter um, chemistry in their real lives? Well, it's in movies. And you can see these are the talks I developed each year. And I personally believe that it was only 2005 when I actually hooked on my current modus operandi, which is show a clip, describe the real chemistry related to that clip. Before that, it was more just, wow, look at this amazing image in the movie. And um, so every year, I developed a new talk. I've only developed two of them since we stopped doing chemistry in the movies at Chemistry Day. Um, but uh, I enjoy making each one of those. So then let me tell you about chemistry in the movies. It started in the year 2000 when I got a new DVD player, went to Blockbuster, and on the shelf was Clambake, could not believe it, Technicolor Marvel. And one hour into that movie, Elvis is a chemist. I kid you not. And I could tell you that whole story. I, my mind was blown. He sang a song about his molecule. It took me three months to decode the structure of that molecule, but I enjoyed that so much that my wife and I, and we watched lots of movies, we kept looking for chemistry in the movies. After about uh, three, four months, I had to make a spreadsheet because we had a list that was too long. And then what you got to do when you make a spreadsheet is you got to decide what are you going to collect? What does chemistry in the movies really mean? And um, so that led me down the path of looking for other movies in the same type of genre. And what you can see is that over the years, I've talked to um, color middle school kids. Um, that is hard work teaching in middle schools, I might add. And um, the senior citizens, they were an easy crowd. Uh, college students, they really rate you hard, um, but they actually do enjoy it. And the assessments for all my talks is a survey. And I'm going to tell you about the survey. Um, my Gen Ken writing assignment in that one, how many students actually did the writing assignment went way up when I used the movies. And um, I ended up with so much material that I wrote a book. And I've still got bookmarks for people who came in late. And the only way to evaluate the quality of the book right, is the book reviews, and everybody loved it. And then now the social media. The thing about social media, of course, as Matt showed us, is that there's all numbers, right? How many people are you reaching? And um, I love that. And uh, so I've tried a little bit of Facebook stuff. So the book has the premise 
that uh, movies are mediators of public understanding of almost everything. And there are books about you know, um, reconstructive surgery in the movies. And so mine is the first one about chemistry in the movies. And what's unusual is no movie maker has ever been a chemist. Right? When they put chemistry in there, they find some expert to tell them the real chemistry. And what's amazing is the chemistry is almost always correct. It's not like physics. Uh, I mean, you've got explosions that are way too big for the size of the uh, stuff that's being blown up. And so what you could do then is you could examine the chemistry because it is real, and then you can answer the question, how does that relate to actually what's going on in the movie? Um, so that was the book. Then here's the Facebook. On the bottom are the number of posts per month. You can see I'm averaging 10 posts per month over two years. That's 240 unique events. What I found out is that um, the way that large companies like uh, Starbucks use Facebook is one post a day with the same message. I am not doing that. And um, all my um, followers are organic. Uh, the very first 30 people or 50 people were my friends. And then after that, just people find you. I love that. Um, so the survey. Um, it looks like this. I ask them to rate the wow after watching the clip. How much did that connect to you? And then I give my little explanation. How much did you learn? And it's all about their feelings about what they learned. So I'm going to try to show this clip. Uh, Fuller Bush Girl, this is one of the gems that I found in my massive search of the world for all the best movie clips. And um, even though it stars Lucille Ball, and it led to her getting the, the job on TV, I'm not going to show you Lucille Ball. She is a personal care products saleswoman. She just sold some hair care products to some ladies. And one of the sons of one of the ladies is Henry. And I'm going to show you Henry's big scene in the movie. <laughs> all right. I've watched that clip many times. And these are all the elements on there. Some of these are um, uh, ions. And so um, this is obviously an ion solution. I then uh, used this clip, actually, in my chemistry classroom, teaching to non-scientists to introduce the periodic table. 24 elements are mentioned in this clip. It's the most, it's the densest number of elements in any movie. Um, and um, what I like to note is that thorium is radioactive, polonium is radioactive. We've got mercury in there. That's going to make your hair fall out if you get it, too much of it. But uh, more to the point, thallium is definitely going to cause your hair to fall out uh, with a, even a small dose. And then also, argon is in there, a noble gas, unreactive. It's really hard to get that into solution. OK. So then um, I have shown 50 movie clips to the, uh, in professional development course, teaching uh, high school and middle school teachers how to use movie clips in the classroom, but also to senior citizens. Here is um, a, a preliminary plot. I didn't do the final plot. But I plot wow versus how well you think you could use this to teach. And you can see the scatter plot. Um, then I thought, I'm going to put this into quadrants. And what I really want is that they think the wow is uh, better than average, and that, yes, I can use this to teach better than average. So you can see most clips actually fall into the really good quadrant, and both avoid the bad quadrants, right? Pure entertainment and pure information, and nobody's going to watch the pure information. Fuller Brush Girl fits right there in the middle, right? Everybody loves that clip. It's short. Really not that much content in there, but it's a great launch of what is the periodic table. Then um, again, um, the high school teachers, who I'm going to call my content experts, um, they're over on the right here. But then the senior citizens. So the senior citizens, we came, uh, it was like four or five weeks in a row, showed them a, quite a few clips. They enjoyed it. And what I like to point out is that every single crowd that I've shown this stuff to, they put the movies, they rate the movies in the similar sort of areas of these quadrants. But what you'll note is the wow is different. So the senior citizens, almost everything's better than average. right? They love these clips. <laughs> the teachers, they were a bit more critical. And I did ask them, OK, you're going to be the one crowd I'm asking. It's not what your wow is, but how do you think this is going to be received by your students? So they, again, they were probably the most critical. Big spread on the wow. However, um, the senior citizens, how much chemistry did you learn? A good spread there. It's really similar to the how much you could think you could use this to teach for the teachers. And that's always been constant. Every single crowd, the how much chemistry did you learn spreads out the same. The wow is different. 
And I think that's one of the most fascinating findings I have. Everybody knows chemistry learning when they see it. The wow is personal. And so um, I ended up with this idea. What I really want is high wow, high learning. And so for the teachers, then high utility. And Apollo 13 is number one. You can see it's almost 10. And it, if anybody's watched that clip, right, the CO2 light goes on, the CO2 light goes off. Totally the most exciting period in that entire movie. And you can talk about all about lithium hydroxide canisters. They mentioned that twice. And why? Um, and so then I made this great uh, image. And if you want to do this in your classroom, I recommend uh, purchasing the DVD or having your department purchase them. That's even better. And uh, use Handbrake. You can grab any uh, sections out of the movie. And then um, they're, it's pretty easy to edit them. So what about uh, my academic side, right? I have to publish um, the utility of this. And I do have some publications on teaching and broader impacts. And what I'm going to show you here is that uh, the first seven were about movies. And I actually have another one that's about to come out about alien biochemistry and uh, extraterrestrial minerals in the movies. And then um, funding. Um, again, I need to get funding. And you can see this is my funding for teaching and broader impacts. In red are the two that were all about using movies. The ones in purple, I used a little bit of movies in those ones. And so try to make my movies work in many different ways. And so with that, I thank you.